Okay, next uh, team on the list here. We got the Detroit Lions. By the way, I've been forgetting to do this for the uh, audience here. 2020 Fantasy Football Almanac and Draft Guide, everybody, uh, is available. Don't worry about the 2020 season. If you're worried about it being canceled, if you buy the book and sign up for the updates, I'll give you free updates for 2021 if there's any cancellation of games, but I'm not even worried about that. Um, free updates throughout the offseason, though, uh, and then also better sleepers. So check it out in the link below. Brad, Detroit Lions, man. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, is right. Uh, yeah, I, 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 know. I know. Okay, I know. so look, let, let, let's talk about the good, okay? Um, let's find the good because I, I do not like Matt Patricia. And I don't think Detroit fans like Matt Patricia either. Ever since he came, he came in a little hot. I think he irked some of these uh, Detroit Lions like players and everything, you know? Not a big believer um, in his coaching ability. But um, last year, Matt Stafford, he was looking like one of the NFL's best passers last year. And then he got hurt and, uh, you know, with the back again, unfortunately, and uh, out for the rest of the season. So, eh, you know, they were okay. They were kind of hovering around that 500 mark when Matt Stafford got hurt. They have talented receivers, they can put up points. But then the rest, you know, this team goes, uh, what were they, uh, 3 12 and 1 last year? Oof. Oof. I think they were Detroit, 3 and 4. Come on, man. Yeah, they were 3, they were 3 3 and 1 when Stafford got hurt. Um, and then they lost every game after that in the rest of the season. They couldn't get anything together. And they didn't have anything behind them at quarterback. But I don't know, man. Like, I don't. I'm going to hit you with a line tried. later. You're gonna be. I think you're gonna be surprised at the line. So I'm gonna ask you to guess it later when we get to that segment. But okay. look, this team could put up points. I think they're kind of, kind of close to being on the verge of a 500 team. But Matt Stafford, man, he's had back injuries a couple times. It's kind of giving me that Tony Romo vibe, man. Like, you know, is the next injury gonna be the last one for Stafford? He's made a ton of money. Yeah, well, I mean, Stafford's one of those guys, and I remember talking about him when I was sitting in the help desk, right? Yeah, this right. Is, yeah. This is 10, 12 years ago, so. Uh, it's it's he's got to be on his way out. He's got to be on the descent, right? So he could be an injury away from that's it and being replaced. And to be honest, I think that I actually don't like it when Green Bay goes against Stafford. I feel like that's that's no easy yeah. victory, no matter what their record is, because he can ball and he's had a lot of success against against Green Bay. But I, I think he's the reason why their franchise hasn't moved up. I think he's one of those guys that keeps you in this weird limbo mm. because he's he has stats and he can play, but there's no real substance to it. We've spoken about this. I think the best thing for Detroit would be to move on, save that money, and just start over. Yeah, it is. You get you get to a point, and Detroit, I know Detroit fans will hate that because they love Stafford. I don't know if that's changed since you know he's getting older and, and all that stuff. I, I think Carolina they like him a little bit less. Yeah, Carolina Panthers fans used to love Cam Newton. They were ready for Teddy Bridgewater, you know. So, so things do change. But let me tell you this, man. So eight games last year, dude was on pace for his best year in the NFL, uh, in his NFL, you know, history. And he's had some big seasons. He was on pace for five thousand yards again, um, close to forty touchdowns and ten interceptions. I mean, this dude was on pace for a monster year, and. Sure. I mean, it's just interesting. You get Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones back there uh, receiving the ball, and they actually added some pieces in the offense this year. So this team, you know, is interesting. But to me, like, the the problem the problem is Matt Patricia. I just have never been a yeah. believer in him, man. Like, I feel like we talked about this, uh, I think, last week, uh, maybe with Cincinnati and, uh, and, and Taylor. There's Zach Taylor. It's, you know, sometimes you see a coach – and we compared him, uh, Zach Taylor, to uh, to uh, uh, Bolas in um, Miami. Sometimes you watch a team, right? Like the Miami Dolphins last year. You see this team, and they fu- they're losing. They're getting their butts kicked, but they're the entire defense is swarming to the football, and they're trying, right? When you see that, you're like, this team likes their head coach, and they're buying in. Then you see a team like Cincinnati last year, or you see Detroit the last two years with Matt Patricia, and you see them – just not fighting for their coach. I don't think they like Matt Patricia. I think yeah, he lost maybe they them. Don't. You know, it's it's it can't. You know, to get a a group of alpha males to buy into what you're trying to do can't be easy. No, right. And I don't think that as a coordinator or whatever he was in New England, New England, 
everyone's bought in because it's Belichick's system and he's got to buy into it. It's not his system. He's, yeah, he's right. bought in, right? Right. You don't have to create that culture. You're in it. And if you're not on board, you're out, right? And and these um, days, the idea of old school football management, I think, is dead. Like Belichick gets away with it because he's had success and he's been in New England so long. If Belichick moved on to a different franchise, maybe Belichick gets away with it. But it's I don't think Matt Patricia who was up and down as a coordinator. He's a defensive coordinator, so it's Belichick's defense anyway. He comes in and he tries to instill the Patriot way in an organization that already has some talent there. And they've had playoff runs with with other coaches in the past. I just I just think he lost them from day one. And, you know, he's been systematically getting rid of their best defensive players, interestingly, because the be- defensive they don't like him. You got a safety that they got rid of uh, in the middle of the season last year. Darius Slay, they get rid of this year, um, who's gone to Philadelphia. I just, man, I don't like the management. And it's not even about the team to me. It's it's like Stafford. I can see it in this offense. I like like the offensive coordinator. I like Daryl Bevel a lot. Um, You had DeAndre Swift in the draft. I think your running backs are much better. There were some injury issues last year. We talked about the receivers. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, I think, is underrated. He came in with a lot of hype last year. Uh, didn't hit expectations, but again, Matthew Stafford was out for eight games, so he didn't really have a lot of chance to hit expectations. I, there is a lot to like on the offensive side of the ball, but the defense, man, I think I think Patricia has really screwed this franchise, um, and I think they need yeah. to get rid of him. I think that you know there is something to say about continuity, and I do like giving coaches continuity when I see that the players have bought in. But what they did basically this offseason, I think, is they handed the keys – uh, they imported a bunch of old New England guys, um, Harmon they get, uh, Danny Shelton they get. Um, you know, Matt Patricia basically, I think, has the next year to say, hey, look, we better see some improvement here because he's gone from 6-10 and 10 his first season to 3-12 uh, and won his uh, second season into whatever this is going to be. I don't know, man. I get rid of Patricia. I would rather have Daryl Bevel as the head coach if I'm a Detroit yeah, right. Lions fan. I just, right. I would. I'm sorry, you I know, would. You know, I know that Cowherd comes out with some stuff that's a little bit ludicrous and off the wall. Like, mm-hmm. you don't want your quarterback to wear a backwards hat. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think he's on to something with the fact that Patricia, just much like the Cleveland Browns head coach, whoever that fat piece of crap was, what was his name? Oh, Kitchens, Freddie Kitchens. Kitchens. Yeah. You just kind of... Like that's that's not a head coach. That guy right there is not a head coach. Yeah. And that doesn't mean he can't be a linebacker coach. And that mm. doesn't mean he can't be a D coordinator. And that's awesome to be those things. Mm. But if but by way of, of head coach, creating culture, getting others to believe you, to be smart enough, to get people to buy in, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, it is a whole different ball game. And I'll say this, we because we rail on the new the idea of the New England Patriots um coordinator, right? I just mentioned uh, Brian Flores in um, in Miami. Uh, I, I I railed against the hiring because I don't like New England Patriots coordinators. I think he did a fantastic job in his first year, and I think Miami's going to surprise some people this year. Again, because he, he has buy-in. You look at Mike Tomlin, who we talked about last week. Tomlin has that locker room, man. They'll fight for him. Um, Joe Judge, another New England Patriots coordinator, special teams coordinator, who's now the head coach of the New, Eng- New York Giants. I feel like he might have some juice there. Um We'll see what happens there. I just don't think Patricia's it. I think Detroit would be better off if they fire him and go to Daryl Bevel. We'll see what happens. But what do you think, Brad, if I asked you what what you would say would be the odds? Like if you placed an over-under, if you were Vegas, right, you were putting over-under on the Detroit Lions season win total, what would, you, what would the line be from your point of view? I think having Stafford and he's competent. Mm-hmm. Um, I would put it at six, six and a half. That's exactly where it is, six and a half. Oh, okay. So Fair. let me ask you now, as a better, which side do you want to be on in that half game? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I know. On that half game, on that half game, uh, I would go under. That's a tough bet, man. I mean, it is a tough bet. I, you know, you know I, I think Green Bay and Minnesota swallow up a lot of those wins, to be honest. And Chicago it's will be tough. better. And Chicago, yeah, right. I think they get they get the wins also, just basically like it's always been happening. Yeah, right. It's man, that's a tough one. I came into this segment fully ready to go on the under, and just man, Stafford is Stafford is good enough. I think this year, if he can stay healthy, to win seven games, I think I think they could be a seven and nine team. I have no faith that Patricia can get anything done. So this team is going to have to outscore people. Man, this is a tough bet. This is a really tough bet. 
I don't like any of the bets so far. I don't like any of the value in this division from what we've been talking about. I'm going to I'm going to take the bold move. I'll go on the over. Mm-hmm. Um but I don't love it because Stafford has to play a full 16. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Man, that's I know. a tough. That's a tough. That's a tough. Draw. I know. All right, uh let's move 